Off the mark. One day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see Thomas, Percy, and Toby at the sheds. I have plans to expand Nafford Harbour in order to make it a more desirable place for ships to come in with goods and passengers. I want you three to take construction supplies. It will be hard work, but I'm sure that you'll be able to handle it. The three engines grinned confidently. Yes, yes sir. sir! From that day forward, the three engines were kept very busy, collecting heavy building supplies from the shunting yard and bringing them down to the harbor. The work was very busy, and they often found themselves exhausted at the end of a long day's work. One evening, Hank the American Engine was waiting at a water tower when he heard an exhausted whistle, and Thomas rolled up behind him. Hey, evening, little fella, Hank pleaded cheerfully. Thomas, panting from exhaustion, didn't reply. Gee, you look like you've been through the ringer. What's the problem? It's the harbor project. The building supplies are so heavy that at the end of every day, my axles are aching. I just want a drink so I can go rest in the sheds. Oh, I'm spent. Hank frowned. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? I pulled loads like that in my sleep. I can handle the heavy building supplies and take a ton of weight off of your buffers. I'm all about helping out the little guy. Thomas scoffed. He found Hank rather condescending. No thank you, Hank. Work isn't worth it if it isn't hard, and I don't need help from big, arrogant engines like you. Hank looked concerned as he finished filling up. Besides, the harbor's on my branch line. You're much too heavy to go down there. The tracks aren't strong enough. As Hank puffed away, he looked back at the tank engine and smiled wryly to himself. The little guy wants to keep his pride. He chuckled and rolled along his way towards the sheds. Over the next few days, Hank kept an eye on the three little engines as they ran back and forth from the harbor. Whenever he noticed one of them struggling, he would always offer them help, but their answer was always the same. No, thank you, Hank. I can handle it. Toby replied sternly to the American engine at Ellsbridge. Besides, you're too heavy! You split the tracks in two! Percy whistled and began to struggle out of the shunting yard with his heavy train. Hank watched him leave and tut tutted to himself. They really insist on doing this themselves, aren't they? Yeah, they're lost, I guess. One day, Thomas returned to the shunting yard, tired from pulling another heavy train. As he tried to catch his breath, he saw Stafford shunting more building supplies onto another train, and groaned. <sighs> I just got back from one of these trains. <laughs> this one isn't for you, Thomas. Your next train isn't due for another few hours. Oh, <sighs> good. Uh, Stafford, I'm gonna take a rest in the sheds. Uh, come find me when my next train is due. Uh, Alright, Thomas, but I'm about to leave. Stafford looked around for any other engines he could tell where Thomas had gone but couldn't find anyone, and as a result, had to leave the yard with his goods train, without anyone knowing where Thomas went. Eventually, the time came for Thomas' train to leave, but there was no sign of the tank engine anywhere. Hank rolled into the yards and saw Philip waiting diligently by the trucks. What are you waiting around for, little fella? Isn't there anyone to take this train? He asked curiously. Well, Thomas is supposed to take it, but nobody knows where he is, Philip replied. Hank raised an eyebrow before looking around the yard to see if Thomas was nearby. He then looked down at Philip and smiled. Poor little guy's probably so tuckered out he passed out in the shed somewhere. Ah, eh, don't worry. I'll take this train myself. Should be easy for a big strong engine like me. Philip, who didn't know any better, smiled. Okay, Mr. Hank, sir. Philip honked before speeding away. Hank backed down onto the trucks and grinned. they will be thanking me for weeks. Feels good to help little Thomas out. The shunter coupled him up. Hank blew his deep whistle before rumbling off towards the branch line, pulling the comparatively light building supplies behind him. Hank soon reached the junction to the harbor. As he stormed past the signal box with his trucks, he failed to notice the weight limit sign standing by the line. He did notice, however, that his chassis began to feel rather strange. Ooh, must be getting old if I'm this sore. I need to pay a visit to the works, Hank muttered as the rails creaked beneath him. With the trucks rattling along behind him, Hank soon approached the outer boundary of the harbor, where Percy and Toby were waiting to take on Cole on a siding. They were very surprised to see Hank. Hank, what are you doing down here? asked Toby, astonished. You're way too heavy, Percy gasped. Hank scoffed as he passed the two engines. I just helping you guys out before mosey on back. Oh! Suddenly, there was a loud creaking sound that echoed through the harbor, all by a clatter of wheels on ballast. Hank groaned in pain as he managed to shudder to a stop, his wheels firmly on the harbor foundation. 
His crew gawked at the mess. Oh, you've made the rails sink into the ground, old boy. You really were too heavy. Hank looked down at his cowcatcher in embarrassment. Hank was so heavy that multiple cranes were needed to rescue him. It took a long time, and it was getting dark when he finally found himself with his wheels all firmly back on the rails. Sir Topham Hat was not happy. Weight limits exist for a reason, Hank. An engine of your size can't just go gallivanting down branch lines. Sir, I was, I was just trying to help. Did Thomas, Percy, and Toby ask for your help, Hank? Hank looked at the three engines. He looked away awkwardly. He sighed. <sighs> no, sir. Sorry, sir. Sir Topham Hat turned and began to walk away. I hope you've learned a lesson, Hank. Yes, sir. I have, sir. Thomas, Percy, and Toby all took Hank to the works. His chassis was very sore, and he felt rather sorry for himself. He looked down at Thomas, who was in front of him. Ah, I'm sorry for taking your trucks, Thomas. I sure listened to you. I was just trying to help out the little guys, you know? Thomas sighed, but smiled. That's all right, Hank. We know you meant well. The fact that you were so willing to help us out is really nice of you. We just sometimes need the help and sometimes don't, Percy finished. Hank seemed pensive for a moment before jovially laughing. Well, thank you for helping me out when I needed it. I'd be stuck at the harbor all night without you guys take me home. Thomas, Percy, and Toby laughed, and they chatted all the way to the steamers. Hank was soon back at work. He still likes to help out the little guy, but... Hey, Philip, need a hand? Yes, please! He always makes sure the little guy wants his help first. 